welcome. I'm Cecilia Alice Sisewit Newser from the CLM Broadcasting Corporation in Freetown. Your top stories this morning. As schools reopen, Sierra Leone Teachers Union gives two weeks ultimatum to the Minister of Basic and Senior Secondary Education for payment of outstanding subsidies. Youth Engagement Network, supported by Voluntary Service Overseas, presents its findings on some of the challenges facing the free quality education in Pujan District. And 32 Sierra Leoneans depart the country to pursue various fields of studies in Hungary. These stories and more plus sport and entertainment are all lined up in this edition of News As with us. Welcome back. We start up the news with the SLTU. Members of the Sierra Leone Teachers Union have given out two weeks ultimatum to the Minister of Basic and Secondary Education for payment of outstanding subsidies for both 2022 to 2023 and 2024 2025 academic year. In an interview with the SLBC, Western Region Secretary of the Union, Fode Kuyate, said they would embark on a strike action if their demands is not met at the end of the two weeks ultimatum. That outstanding payment of second term and third term school fee subsidies for last academic year have not been paid. When you wrote that letter, on the 22nd of April, government managed to pay the second term school fee subsidies, leaving out the third term school fee subsidy for last academic year. Again, on the 30th of July 2024, this year, we wrote another letter that schools are about to reopen this September, and we don't want the reopening of schools with a backlog of third term last academic year school fee subsidies and as i speak to you government have still not paid the third term school fee subsidy of last academic year and we have started this academic year last, yesterday was morning we started this academic year and we have in that letter we told government that for the schools for this free quality education school fee subsidies are meant are meant for what to run the school mm. So if they know if this the stuff is not there, then it will undermine quality. Definitely will undermine quality. The motivation of teacher will not be there, the school furniture will not be made, children will sit on the floor, and a lot of other issues will, will arise. And that is why we are we are we are appealing to the to the Ministry of Finance. As the PRO rightly said yesterday from the Ministry of Basic and Senior Secondary Education, that they have done all their paperwork, and it's now left with the Ministry of Finance to take action. Mm. So that is why I am here representing the union to say Ministry of Education to the Minister. Mm. Please, if you want a, His Excellency's planning program on education, please pay the school fee subsidy. By now, this school fee subsidy is, we, are, we should not be talking about the third term school fee subsidy, last academic year. We should be talking about this academic year before the European schools, the subsidies should be there. So what we are saying, as you know, we support government in the free quality education. In fact, when it was when it was um, when it was proclaimed by His Excellency in 2018, we applauded, we supported it, and we are still supporting the free quality education. But if there are challenges, we have to see it, and this, those challenges must be addressed. And that is why. We want to appeal to the Ministry of Finance, since the Ministry of Basic and Senior Secondary Schools says it is now left with the Ministry of Finance. We want to appeal to the Ministry of Finance through the Accountant General's Office okay. to assist, let me use the word assist, the schools to get the school fee subsidies this particular month so that the schools will be up and running. Our teachers to continue teaching the children of this country. This week, before the end of this week, we'll have a high-power delegation to the Ministry of Finance. We'll, we'll 
like we'll talk to the minister, the deputies, the account general's office, and at least appeal to them that before the commencement of next week's school work, we want these subsidies to be paid. We continue with the Ministry of Technical and Higher Education that has organized a farewell ceremony for 32 Sierra Leonean students who received the prestigious stipendium Hungary Com Scholarship for the 2024-2025 academic year. The awardees are set to pursue undergraduate and postgraduate studies in various fields including science, technology and medicine in Hungary. Jonathan Turner reports. This batch of stipendium Hungary Com scholars will pursue studies in Hungary, continuing a long-standing educational partnership between Sailun and Hungary. In a ceremony held at the Ministry of Technical and Higher Education Headquarters Conference Hall in Freetown, Acting Director for Europe at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Khadija to Alpha, urged the students to represent Sailun well and to strive for academic excellence. She emphasized the importance of the awardees making the most of this opportunity and called on them to return with good grades to contribute to the country's development. Again, I urge you all to use the library during your free time. Immerse yourself with the art of reading. This can enhance your cognitive ability. Remember, if you stop reading, you start dying. Therefore, I urge you all to do your very best at your various University. Uh Minister of Technical and Higher Education, Dr. Haja Ramatulai Wui, reiterated the government's commitment to human capital development, stressing that education was key to the country's transformation. She encouraged the students to focus on their studies and work hard, reminding them that they were part of Sileon's vision for national growth through education and skills development. Your education is a powerful tool for national development. I'm also very happy to note that over 30% of the awardees are female students, which aligned with the government's Gender Equality and Women's Empowerment Act of 2022. And a lot of them will be thriving in fields that are historically dominated by men. So I'm very happy to note that. That we are changing the narrative gradually with regards to that. But at the same time, you will, be, you will face the inevitable challenges of adapting to a new environment, whether it's adjusting to a different academic system or navigating cultural differences. But I urge you to remain steadfast and resilient, be open-minded, and approach these challenges as opportunities for growth. The awardees expressed their deep appreciation for the scholarship among them Kemo Kaindene and Rosetta Kagbo vowed to apply the knowledge and skills they will acquire abroad to contribute to Sireleon's development. In the University of Belgium, I will try to come back home and give out the knowledge that I have learned so that it will continue to aid and speed up the development for the transformation of the country. Engineering, when it comes to computer science aspect side of the study, we don't have ladies more that going to it. To be honest, it's a difficult course. Even me, it wasn't easy to make the decision, but because it's something I love doing. Everything that has to do with computer is something I love doing. So, especially into coding using programming languages is something I love doing. So I'm already prepared and my mind is made up. The program, initiated by the Hungarian government, offers full-funded scholarship to international students promoting academic exchange and cooperation. For SLBC News, Jonathan Turner reporting. Meanwhile, the new school year resumed on Monday and as usual, the SLPC um, were out and about in Freetown. Our team observed that many school authorities and pupils were in full attendance at the Methodist Girls High School and Technical Secondary School. Joseph Bassi compiled this report and read in the studio by Moses Conte. Over the years, many pupils have the culture to sit at home on the first day of school opening. But this year's school opening was a different narrative, as many pupils, including freshers, were in full attendance here at the Methodist Girls High School. Most continuing and new pupils were seen taking their lectures in a conducive environment, 
Junior Secondary School Principal Margaret Manabangua said that the weather was not conducive, but they managed to settle the pupils. The weather is warm, the weather is not conducive for us today. The rain, but we have managed to settle our girls in their various classes. At the Government Technical Secondary School at Kungukos, the school authorities held an orientation session with the new pupils. Principal Mloli Lee Densin Johnson said that the attendance was also encouraging than the previous years. Most of the pupils are not here, but the ones who are here, we are going to attend to them. We started today with an orientation program, we to orientate the pupils, show them each department, the school, all the offices there. However, it was a different scene at the West Africa Methodist College School, which has less number of pupils who attended school on the first day. Normally, before this academic year, we used to have interviews like a week or two before the reopening of schools. But this time around, we started interviews last week, and this week is the reopening of schools. As the new academic year begins across the country, teachers and pupils are in high spirits to make huge difference in the educational sector. Now, acting principal of the annual Arch Memorial Secondary School, Siltina Williams said that the turnout on the first day of school is great, accounting for about 60% of the school population. Cynthia Kamara has more. The turnout of pupils on the first day of school at the annual Arch Memorial School was appreciable and they were neatly dressed in their newly designed bags and shoes. They were excited to start the new academic year after a long resting holiday. Unlike all pupils, freshers were seen accompanied by their parents, even as some looked strange around the school vicinity. Acting principal of the Annie Walsh Memorial School, Maintainer Williams, noted the turnout was very encouraging. And appeal to some parents to send their children to school. For the turnout is, is great. For the first day of school, oh, I am really impressed. At least half of the, 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 the class size will see pupils in school for the turn of today. And we are excited about it. I have been around to check and I noticed that they even bring their textbooks. Um, yes, we have some teachers that have been in the class all ready to teach them. As teachings have already started effectively, the teachers and pupils of the Annual Memorial School look forward to see their pupils and colleagues as they prepare for effective learning. For SABC News, Still on the reopening of schools, but this time away from Freetown. Turnout of pupils on opening day of schools in McKinney has largely been described as low compared to previous academic year. Most of the schools were empty and some have all only begun preparations to commence teaching and learning. Hassan Foy compiled this report. For many people, low turnout in school on first week has become a norm. While some described it as negligence, a lot more, especially parents and guardians, largely related it to economic hardship to fulfill all the needs in time. At Child in Need Primary School, it was densely quiet. Classrooms were empty. No pupils could be seen around except for two teachers who were present. Daniel Pratt was one of them. Well, the first day, when school open, the turn up it look poor. The turnout on this first day is very poor, very low. I believe it's because of the economic situation. It is not easy. Some parents are still preparing. He said the handful of people who turned out were sent back home to urge their colleagues to begin attending. The situation in many other government and government assisted schools within the municipality looked similar and there were no sign it could change during the course of the week at geraldine elementary high school at aisha street it was totally different One, two, I 
turnout was quite encouraging. Teachers and pupils in high spirit as effective teaching and learning already commenced. The teachers of the school said due to their enrollment, the number of pupils present was more encouraging than last year. And we're glad the way the picked their camp. We are happy that the children are here. And we encourage parents to continue to send them. We have already begun to teach them today. Masire Grace Toure, Jesse's two people said she was happy to meet with friends after the long break. Because why I'm so happy that because I'm going to meet my new friends, I'll be learning some things that I forgot and more new things that are that I'm going to know. So I'm so happy that the children that school is going to reopen today because the things that I've lost, I'm going to regain them back. And I'm so happy that because the school has many qualities that will make any children to be happy going to school. And I love going to school too much because I have the passion not for school. However, the Ministry of Basic and Senior Secondary Education, Bombali District, has continued to encourage parents and guardians to send their children to school and urged administrations and teachers to get back to work in order to keep up with the syllabus. You're still watching News Hour from the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation in Freetown. We continue with more stories with news just in the past 24 hours. Now, the Executive Secretary, Political Parties Regulation Commission, Olushogo David, has said that due to the Commission's inclusive involvement of all political parties, they have enjoyed political tolerance in all their engagement. He made this disclosure at the Ministry of Information and Civic Education weekly press briefing in Freetown. Aona Kamara reports. The Executive Secretary, Political Parties Regulation Commission, Olushon Go David, said they considered all registered political parties as equal, and all political parties went through the same process to establish as a political party. He said that political parties in opposition are expected to hold the ruling government accountable in a fair manner and inform the people as to their findings as to the implementation of the government's developmental activities. The chairman of all political parties association, Pris Korka, said their role is to engage with the government in ensuring that they guide the ruling government for the development of the country. As opposition parties, they are not only there to oppose the government, but to work together for the development of the country. The national president, Young Women in Governance Network, Kumba Fevo Amara, said they are pleased with the PPRC 2022 Reviewed Act that encouraged the inclusion of women in leadership positions in all political parties. She called for more awareness of the PR system, noting that the system is not encouraging the inclusion of political parties as compared to the constituency system, emphasizing the inclusion of everyone for a just society. Madam Kumba Amara called on government to continue giving space to young people. The Deputy Minister of Information and Civic Education, Abdul Aziz Bayo, said that the visit of the President to China has major benefits to the country, outlining the $50 million project signed by the Communication Technology and Innovation Minister with Huawei for the construction of the smart city as just one among several others. For SLBC News, Aruna Patrick Kumar reporting. In an effort to address emerging illegal social issues, the Ministry of Social Welfare and the Family Support Unit under the CLN Police have started reviewing the Memoranda of Understanding signed in 2003 and 2007 MOU on physical and sexual abuse of children and gender-based violence. Christiana Kamara witnessed the start of the process at the Ministry of Social Welfare, New Glenville, NI Airport. The review session brought together social workers and the police from the family support units across the country. It is in response to emerging issues of gender-based violence, child abuse, human trafficking, migrant smuggling, and others. The document is expected to bring about collaboration and coordination in combating sexual and gender-based violence, child abuse, domestic violence, and other emerging social crimes. Minister of Social Welfare Melrose Kamintin said that there was an increased cases of domestic violence in the country, but she was confident that the MOU would seek to address them. Let's make sure that justice is served. We are in that role to make sure that we do the right thing. When we start doing the right thing in this country without any compromise, 
you will see that the people will stop. Because some of them, they will tell you, hey, let the chemical go. And it's not good. Challenge them. That's no. If you commit it, I'm not going to worry. Because I'm going to do the right thing to serve our conscience and to serve this nation. The minister called her ministry and family support unit to work together to care and ensure justice for victims of sexual and gender-based violence. Head of family support unit, SCP Fatma Tadabo Kamara, admonished participants to recognize their varied mandates and responsibilities with requisite skills, knowledge, and competence. Together, we work seamlessly to ensure a survivor-centered approach effort we enhance the quality of our responses, improve victim support services, and increase the likelihood of successful prosecution against perpetrators. The MOE expected to be signed on the 17th of September this year. It will help in solving various issues of domestic violence and other illegal social issues. SLBC News are in Freetown. Christian Akama reporting. The International Organization for Migration, in collaboration with the Mano River Union, MRU, has kicked off the maiden edition of the Migrants in Countries in Crisis Training, the two-day workshop aimed at enhancing the protection and management of migrants during crisis, and it brings together representatives from member states of the MRU. Esther Sacco was there in our report. The training for migrants in countries in crisis for participants from Guinea, Liberia, Cote d'Ivoire and Sierra Leone seeks to improve emergency preparedness, crisis response and recovery strategies. Head of IAM Sierra Leone, Christos Christodolides, highlighted the critical need for migrants' inclusive emergency preparedness and response mechanisms. He stated that the training aims to strengthen the region's capacity to protect migrants during and after crises. Throughout, uh, government participants will work through uh, real case scenarios, will share their experiences, their expertise, and hopefully after these two-day trainings, we will come out with concrete actions that we can implement in collaboration with the Manu River Union Secretariat when it comes to uh, preparedness and again uh, the response in times of crisis on how how to integrate migrants and ensuring that they are not left behind in the response during a crisis. So Secretary General Mano River Union Ambassador Simeon Moriba highlighted the relevance of MRU's contribution to member states, stating such training seeks to ensure that migrants and vulnerable populations are not left behind. Senior Technical Advisor, Minister of Internal Affairs, Amadou Mana, emphasized the importance of the initiative, stating it reflects the government's steadfast commitment to announcing the protection and assistance of migrants in countries experiencing crisis. It's an invaluable opportunity for us to exchange knowledge, share best practices, and develop coordinated responses to protect the most vulnerable among us. I'm confident that the insights gained during, this, gained during these uh, sessions will significantly enhance our collective ability to respond to migration crisis with compassion and efficiency. Participants in the coming days will engage in practical scenarios, sharing expertise on emergency planning, communication, and evacuation processes. The training highlights the importance of international cooperation, with Selyun taking a lead in ensuring that its migrants are included in crisis management efforts, particularly in the MIU. SLBC News, Esther Sako reporting. Now for the environment, Christian Lawyers Center Legal Link has held its Climate Justice 2024 conference at the Afrisal American Corner in Freetown to discuss on climatic issues affecting the country. The conference centered on urgent issues pertaining to climate change and its impact in Sierra Leone. Stella Bangura reports. 
environmental advocates, legal experts, policymakers, and students gathered in Freetown to discuss on climate issues in Sierra Leone, such as heavy rains, deforestation, illegal mining activities, flooding, amongst others. The conference focused on climate justice conflict, the impact of climate change on the environment, economy, politics, and human rights. It's provided for expert opinions, bringing relevant stakeholders to discuss and present recommendations to environmental disasters and ways to address harmful human practices to the environment. We are going to have a new dialogue that will develop certain uh, rules and regulations that will present to key state uh, institutions, departments and even state players for implementation. That will not only stop that. But let me also refer you back to how Serbia has been able to localize the idea. Of course, the Supreme Law of the States, as the Constitution, we all know, has called it very clearly. From the civic education perspective, we believe it should be all hands on deck. Not only state institutions, not only the civil society member, but we should take this conversation to the community where this aggression on our climate is taking place. Various presentations were done on climate change and its adverse effects across the country. Participants lauded the initiative and advocated for serial unions to protect the environment. Among several recommendations was the need for a climate change act so as to ensure the effectiveness of climate justice, capacity in existing environmental institutions, ratifying and domesticating the Paris Accord, citizen education and the training of teachers and pupils so as to promote awareness on climate change. For SLBC News R in Freetown, Stella Bangura reporting. While it's now time for our international news. This is the international news and I am Cecilia Alice Sisse. At least 19 people have been killed in an overnight Israeli strike in the designated humanitarian zone in southern Gaza, the Hamas Run Health Ministry says. Eyewitnesses say the strike obliterated an area crowded with tents for displaced Palestinians in an Al Mawasi southwest of Han Yunis, leaving huge craters in the sand. The Israeli military said its aircraft attacked what it called a number of senior Hamas terrorists operating there, a claim Hamas denied. The military also disputed the initial death toll put out by the Hamas run civil defense authority which reported that rescue teams had recovered more than 40 bodies hundreds of thousands of people from other areas of gaza are living in their conditions in the al mawasi after being told by israel to evacuate there for their own safety a swiss appeals court has convicted the prominent islam scholar tariq ramadan of rape overturning a previous acquittal dating back to 2023. Swiss broadcaster RTS reported that at the end of August, the court ruled Ramadan must serve a three-year prison sentence, two of them suspended for an assault that the accuser said took place in 2008. Ramadan, 62, is a Swiss citizen and the grandson of Hassan Albana, the founder of Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood. He rose to prominence as an academic in the early 2000s, and in 2007, he became a professor of Islamic studies at St. Anthony's College, Oxford. Ramadan challenged Muslim fundamentalists and encouraged dialogue between religions, but was accused by some critics of promoting political Islam. Ramadan was initially accused of rape in 2017 by a French woman and when that case became public, more women came forward with claims that he had attacked them or made unwanted sexual advances. The 47 inmates were able to escape because of a breach in the prison security system, the Justice Ministry said in a statement. The prison is in Kakata, a town 55 kilometers or 34 miles northeast of the capital Monrovia, 
The ministry said that it was deeply concerned about this incident and is taking all necessary measures to ensure the capture of the escaped inmates. The country's national police have also deployed additional officers to assist in the search of the fugitive, the ministry said. Prisons in Liberia are often severely overcrowded and inmates lack access to enough food and basic medical care. Last year, a prison in Monrovia ran out of food and two other prisons briefly stopped taking inmates because of food shortages. A large number of inmates are also detained without a trial. In November 2022, a UN report found that 73% of the nationwide prison population were pre-trial detainees. And finally, on the international news, a boat carrying migrants capsized off the coast of Senegal over the weekend, leaving at least four people dead and several others missing, local authorities said. The artisanal fishing boat left the town of Umbo, nearly 80 kilometers or 50 miles south of the capital, Dakar, heading to Europe on Sunday afternoon before capsizing a few miles off the coast. Amadou Diop, the district prefect, told the Associated Press, Senegalese Navy is looking for those missing, Diop said, adding that the exact number of passengers remained unknown. In recent years, the number of migrants leaving West Africa through Senegal has surged with many fleeing for conflict, poverty and the lack of job opportunities. Most head, of, most head to the Canary Islands, a Spanish archipelago of the coast of West Africa, which is used as a stepping stone to continental Europe. Well, that's the end of the international news. Thanks for watching. I am Cecilia. Alice is say goodbye. Well, now from the international news, we move over to business updates. Hello and welcome to Business Update, the segment that brings you stories about business and the economy. I am Moses Conte. In this edition, traders at the Central Business District have raised concern on the challenges they have encountered because of the present weight of prices of onions across the country. This development was prior to the hike in price of onions which have led to its scarcity and they are calling on government for swift deduction of price of onions. Here's the report. Onions, being one of the major ingredients one think of before going to the market, does not only serve as a delicious spice to our food, but it's useful for several purposes in the human body. Thus, the need for its availability is of essential. Currently, because of the price instability on onions across the country, traders at Congo Market lamented on the high rates of price of onions. Uh, really, the abas really short being because the radio will buy abas 150 tally for bag. But now, the abas now 550,000. It's not really easy. For let you sell as we a business person, for let go buy, for let we will get. It's not really easy. We tell God in grace. For lady, even the 550 tally for common force, there you go, member now, what you go get. It's not really easy. Safia Tumansari said government should engage importers of onions to deduct on the wholesale price, adding that since government has started onion production in Sierra Leone, local onions should serve as an alternative to imported ones. The abas in price is affected greatly because from this abas, now they will be able to get for survive with where we're picking them but the price they go up every day you know they can't down. i can remember the last time we buy a bus 150 000 for bag but now the abbas now will go with the bar now 550 000. can you imagine this but we don't see say government with a big papa government like put on because we see say they don't begin plants in a salon and let them help for developing places then they for let them go plant the more than plants will get large quantity at least the one and self where they come 
If they meet with own price uh, in reasonable, then say for the face they own from out country, then we will make a reasonable for we, we will be able to sell and we will get and survive with where we picking them. As the government is working so hard to fulfill its mandate, which was to feed the nation, commodities which are necessary needs of the country should meet their pocket. Thus, traders and buyers at the Congo Town market are calling on government's attention. Moses Conte for SLBC. That's all for business update with me, Moses Conte. Now let's find out the latest in entertainment. And welcome to the entertainment news with me Maria to Dukurnau in today's headlines the Big Brother Niger eviction for this weekend and we have Shalom who was Miss Earth Sierra Leone 2022 in preparation to represent Sierra Leone again on another beauty pageant called Miss Cosmo and of course many others The Big Brother still continues, it's still ongoing and people of course are rooting for their contestants and now as we know the contestants are no more contesting or fighting to win this thing in pairs but now the pairs have been dissolved and everybody is fighting for their own heads. So this weekend the eviction of course went as planned and Big Brother evicted no one for this week so everybody was safe and let's take a look at this. Not leaving tonight. Oh, you're all safe for another week. I told you I was in a good mood today. All right, congratulations to all of them and keep voting for your favorite contestants. You never know, they might win. Next up, is another beauty competition another international beauty pageant competition is on the way and Sierra Leone is hopeful to be represented at this inaugural Miss Cosmo pageant which will take place in Vietnam now Vietnam has been at the capital of you know international pageants to be hosted since last year or for the past two years or so and this year we hopefully would see Shalom Prosperia Ella John, who was Miss Earth 2022. She represented Sierra Leone at the Miss Earth competition and now we are hopeful that she will represent us again at the inaugural Miss Cosmo beauty pageant in Vietnam later on this year. And moving on from beauty pageants to TikTok. Now TikTok sensations who have been entertaining us with their niche performance of Indian Bollywood, you know, dances. These TikTok performers we may all know, as you see on the screen, they are some of their videos. They have been officially married. Congratulations to them. from my life now you I choose. Don't they wonder if you everything I cruise? If I do, you don't my baby boo, I'm sorry. And before we leave, a sad loss in the entertainment industry, especially in the international scene, as James Earl Jones has died at age 93. Now, James Earl Jones has lived a fulfilling life, especially within the entertainment and the acting field, as he has acted so many roles and he is a very, very notable. He was pardon me, a very, very notable actor. Some of his biggest um, movies or performances that we would all remember him for is, of course, Darth Vader in Star Wars. Now, for those of us who follow Star Wars religiously, who follow the franchise of Star Wars, we know that Darth Vader is one of the main roles of this movie or this franchise film and James was part of this movie as Darth Vader. Of course, other movies include Coming to America, the popular, popular Coming to America, both the original and the part two, Conan the Barbarian, The Lion King, um, Primetime Emmy Awards, of course, for his performances in Heat Wave, Gabriel's Fire, East Side, West Side, Dawn's Early Light, Picket Fences, and many, many more. 
we want to say our condolences to the family and of course to the entertainment industry because of this is a big loss all right that's all we have in today's entertainment news hope you enjoyed it as much as i did this i have been maria Tudukwe. thank you so much for watching until next time see you From the entertainment news, we move over to our sports desk. Hello and welcome to Sports Updates on the news with me, Mohamed Lamintwe. In this edition of the update, Sierra Leone lost by three goals to two in the Afghan Cup of Nations qualifier in Lusaka against Zambia. Here is the highlights. Cross delivered the free header and that's the opening goal from Kennedy Musonda. Zambia's first goal of the African Cup of Nations qualification. And it's the 29 year old Kolka and Kabir. Picked out perfectly by the Cass Cargo. Took a touch and beat Malenga at his near post. First real attempt on goal for Sierra Leone and they've scored it. Zambia won, Sierra Leone won. The lead lasted just five minutes for Zambia. Now they're coming back again, but no foul given. And there's the goal! Kelvin Campamba! The substitute off the bench, out of nothing. Puts Zambia back in front. From Hindelo Mustafa! Didn't even take five minutes this time for Sierra Leone to draw level. The second half is turning into a story of two substitutes. Hindolo Mustafa with a superb solo strike. Scored already. Cletus Chalmer getting ready to duck. It's Kangwa. Lofts it over the wall and into the goal! Kings Kangwa gives Zambia the lead again! Well, details of that story we bring you in our subsequent programs. And now to our local leads. Magazine Community FC secured a place in the Kofa quarterfinals after beating Congo Community football team by two goals to one in the round of 16. Esther Marie Samoa has more. The atmosphere was electrifying as supporters of both communities anticipated a win. But fortunately for magazine community football team, they sailed through with two sensational goals for Mohamed Mansare and Momo Sanko. Magazine enjoyed the lion shares in ball possession with a huge fan base cheering their players. But a consolation goal from Abubakar Conte of Kungo Town Community in the 89th minute led to a more intense battle. But unfortunately, time was not on their side as Magazine FC won 2-1. The win, according to Usman Ramadan Bangura, head coach of Magazine FC, was a testament of their commitment and determination, stating that this was the first time in 11 years that they have been able to secure a spot in the quarterfinal stage of the Kofa Inter-Community League. Magazine FC will play against Mountain City in the quarterfinals. Bangura maintained that they have 
and must expect for their opponent, but they will continue their immense preparation to eliminate Mountain City and book a slot in the semis. Chairman of the Central One Football Association, Philip Klein Cold, commended the community representatives for such a successful league so far. He said, Amidst some challenges encountered in the league, the organizational structure has been successful. Philip Sinclair Cole continued that mechanisms have been put in place in ensuring a violence-free campaign. The quarterfinals commences on Thursday coming with Bambara Town Community FC taking on Fobe Community Football Team. Well, that's all we have for in this edition of Sports Updates on the News with me, Mohamed Lamintoui. Thank you very much for joining me. Goodbye. Many thanks to our sports desk for that update and that's all in this edition of the news. Now to end the news, the top stories again. To assess and profile solutions to some of the factors hindering children's access to quality education in Pujan district, the Youth Engagement Network Sierra Leone with voluntary service overseas has presented their research report gathered from schools in six communities in the district. Members of the Sierra Leone Teachers Union have given out two weeks to the Ministry of Basic and Senior Secondary Education for payment of outstanding subsidies. And 32 Sierra Leonean students have received the prestigious stipendium scholarship to pursue undergraduate and postgraduate studies in Hungary. Well, that's the end of the news from the Sail and Broadcasting Corporation in Freetown. Thanks for watching and do continue to stay tuned to the public broadcaster DSLBC. More stories will pop up in our 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. editions of News Hour. Coming up next is Good Morning Sierra Leone. My name is Cecilia Alice Sissi. Wishing you a lovely day. Goodbye. <laughs>